What's up guys, it's Eric. I know it's been a long time since we did one of these videos, but we're gonna look at some viewer photo submissions today. So if you're new to the channel or you aren't familiar with these videos, essentially people just submit photos. The only rule is that they have to be taken on film. Uh, people send me five different photos. They include a little bit of information about themselves, a little bit of information about the camera that they used, the lens they used, and the film stock they shot it on. Pretty simple, right? Yeah, let's, let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so my first submission is from someone named Lu Shang. He says, uh, hi Eric, my name's Shang, a long time viewer from China. I started my analog photography journey a year ago. Uh, the reason he started shooting was because he thought that a traditional film SLR would be much lighter and easier to use than a DSLR. So he found his father's Nikon FM10. The more film he shot, uh, the more fun he found uh, film photography to be. He started to not only shoot black and white, color negative and slide film, but also motion picture, infrared and expired films. So he's, he's all over, man. He's trying everything. Uh, he also tried cross-processing and bleach bypass films as well. Uh, generally, film photography is much more playful, he says, than digital photography to him. So he links to his Instagram, which I will link below, as always. And uh, let's jump in and take a look. These photos are really cool. I'm excited to look at these. All right, so photo number one. This was a waste collector in Hong Kong. This is on a Nikon FM10, the 35 through 70 millimeter zoom lens on Ilford HP5. So the first thing I noticed about this photo is it's incredibly grainy. Uh, I mean that in the best way possible. It looks like black and white film in a way that there's no denying. <laughs> you know, there's no question that this was taken on a 35 millimeter film camera. Beyond that, there's a really cool sense of movement. It's, it's, it's almost a very cinematic look to this image with the, uh, the lines leading back there, this man moving. There's a little bit of motion blur in his foot and in the car that's passing. It's a really good image. It, it definitely brings to mind a, a lot of movement, a, a sense of sort of chaos. Very, very cool. Photo number two, you say the traditional market is going to be abandoned soon, so you went there to shoot one roll of film for your mom for the memories. Uh, this is on Nikon FM10, 35mm f2 lens, Kodak Vision 3 250D motion picture film. I'm uh, I'm very interested in, in where you bought the motion picture film and, and how you shoot and process it. I've never I've never tried anything but Cinestill. Uh, that's processed in C41 chemistry, but this is really cool. I, I saw this, you know, this and the first one were the two that really caught my attention when I was looking at your images in the preload and the email. A great sense of depth to this image. Again, a lot of movement. It looks like, an, you know, obviously an incredibly crowded space and the colors, that, that incredible desaturation that you're getting from the motion picture film is, is something something special. It's a really cool photo. I like this one a lot. Next up, sunset at the top of the mountain. I don't know which mountain, but you say it's a challenge to use Velvia 50 to shoot sunsets, but this one turned out really, really nicely. Uh, this is on the Nikon FM10 35mm f2 lens uh, on Fujichrome Velvia 50. So first and foremost, so this is 35mm just like the first one, and I think it's amazing to look at the difference in... Uh, resolution between that black and white film and something like Velvia 50. It's it's so much crisper. There's so much less noise, and I don't mean that necessarily as a you know saying it's better or worse, but it's just it's incredibly different. Um, I it's it's a very gentle looking photo for Velvia. Uh, Velvia has a tendency to become really contrasty in situations like this, and and you maintain kind of that that fall off into the into the haze in the background, which is really really lovely. The green, obviously, the, the amount of saturation in the colors is a beautiful photo. It's really, really nice. You say here, compared to Kodak Tri-X, you prefer Ilford HP5+, Plus, but it doesn't mean you don't love Kodak Tri-X. And this is on uh, the Nikon FM10, 35mm f2 again, and you know, as, as I said, on Tri-X. This is a really interesting photo, just from a, kind of a, an aesthetic standpoint, a graphical standpoint. It's, it's evenly divided in the middle, a uh, set of stone steps leading up, and then the one person in the background, the sky is completely clear of clouds or anything. It is, it's really cool. It's a really neat photo. I, I think this one, uh, obviously it's Tri-X, so it's grainy. You know, you're going to get that no matter what, but uh, it actually looks, you know, possibly a little less grainy than the first image, but it's it's very cool. You know, I'm a big fan of Tri-X. It's, it's kind of how I learned to shoot film, so I enjoy using it. I enjoy developing it, um, and I enjoy looking at it, yeah. And then last, uh, this is, it. you said the cat, cross-processed. Uh, this is E6 film processed in a C41 uh, chemistry. Uh, this is the Nikon FM10 again, the 35 millimeter F2. This is uh, Provia 400, expired in 2002. As far as I know, Provia 400 is no longer available. I've, I've shot a lot of Provia 100F. Uh, this looks great. I have never cross-processed film, but two things. I love cats, 
and the colors look really cool. Uh, the grain looks really cool. It's a really beautiful image. Uh, the fall off in focus, you you nailed the focus on the, the kitty's face. Um, yeah, this is a really cool, really beautiful, really saturated, colorful image, and I like it very much. So uh, thank you for submitting. Thank you for your photos, and thank you for watching. I, I really appreciate it. These are really good. So our next submission is from someone named Michel uh, Oliveira. Michel, Michael, not sure. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. He says, uh, hi, Eric. How you doing, man? My name is Michel. I'm from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been following your channel since the very first video, and I never miss an upload. That's the very first video? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry if that's true. I apologize wholeheartedly. Uh, he says, I'm an amateur photographer and started shooting film two years ago. We didn't have a lot of options here in uh, his country when it comes to analog photography, but there's still some places you can buy Kodak and Fuji stock and one lab to process it. Well, I'm glad there's one at least. I, there has to be more than that. Sao Paulo is enormous, right? It's huge. Um, I'd imagine, I mean, you probably know better than me, but I, I feel like there has to be stuff. You can always mail it out too if worse comes to worse. He says, I'm sending you photos to the viewer photo submissions. Be really glad if you could take a look at them. That's, yes. Uh, all the photos were shot with a Nikon FM2 and a 50 millimeter 1.8 D lens from Nikon as well. They're all 35 millimeter film. All right, sounds good. Let's take a look. All right, so first and foremost, you did not tell me what film you used for any of these, so we're just going to kind of have to guess. I'm not going to guess. Feel free to comment. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what film. Anyone who wants to hazard a guess at what these are, go ahead. So this first image is uh, obviously a woman uh, in the foreground smoking a cigarette. Uh, she's in focus. The skyscrapers and, and actually the railing you know, just behind her are completely out of focus. Um, this is a really contrasty image. It looks like it might have been a little bit underexposed initially. I, I might be wrong, but the grain is really fine, really beautiful. It's very cool. Uh, it's evenly divided right down the middle uh, vertically. Um, the highlights, you know, the sky looks like it's a little bit blown, but it's, it's a really, really cool image. A lot of contrast. You know, I've said this before, but black and white film has a really beautiful way of handling kind of the transition to highlights. And you can see it in this image. It's, it's no different here. You know, her skin on her face and on her fingertips, the, the tip of the cigarette, uh, it just sort of sings. It's, it's really lovely. And you can see actually, it looks almost like you might've focused on the cigarette or, you know, on her lips there because the, the tip of the cigarette is, is really sharp you know, as compared to the rest of the image, but looks like it was shot wide open. Uh, yeah, lovely. All right, so this image, now this is a photo that looks totally different full size versus what it looked like when I initially saw it on my phone. So uh, when I glanced at it, it looked like a forest, you know, a backlit forest. Now when I look at it uh, full size, so obviously these look like Brazilian trees, like some sort of, you know, Amazon rainforest style trees here, but um, they're in perfect rows, which leads me to believe that they were planted. Um, I don't know the situation behind it, but it's it's really interesting. The light behind it is blown out, like extremely blown out. Like you can see it, it, it looks like the, the UFOs are coming down to, to abduct us here. It's just, you know, leaking through the trees and, you know, glowing. Uh, it's really cool. It's a really neat image. Uh, I like it quite a bit. Obviously, the, the lines are leading you back, you know, through that hallway of trees and you've got kind of the glowing light behind it. Really interesting, really neat. Now, this one looks like it was shot on kind of like a consumer grade C41 film, like Kodak Gold or, you know, Superior or something like that. It's, it's, um, it's desaturated. It's got kind of a greenish tone to everything. The shadows have kind of a greenish tint to them. Uh, it's interesting. You know, obviously the focus is sharp in the foreground and it, it goes out of focus quickly, but uh, I like the guy kind of off to the right there holding his head. He looks exhausted, <laughs> silhouetted. Same sort of look to this image. It's got that sort of desaturated greenish bluish tone to it, uh, almost like something from a David Fincher or Gore Verbinski movie. It's uh, it's really cool. The grain is very evident in this one. I really like the uh, the woman in the uh, the window there. She's framed by the window, you know, playing with her phone, you know, using her phone, whatever. She's she's the kind of the focus of the image, as far as I can tell. Your eye is drawn to her. You have the guy walking, you know, next to her there. But but it's a really cool photo. I like this quite a bit. Uh, graphically, I like how it's you know symmetrical on both sides. You have that kind of square in the middle. You have the arrows pointing either way. It's it's really neat. This is a great photo. Now this one, this is wild. This is on either in the rain or in the fog. I mean, it looks like the fog. Super, super grainy, uh, super contrasty. Just the silhouettes of these people disappearing into the distance. I don't really know how much there is to say about this image. Honestly, it's, it's a very simple image, but it's very striking. Uh, it's divided evenly down the middle. You have those lines leading off to those people and they're just kind of disappearing into the fog. Really, really cool, really grainy. Uh, I like this one quite a bit. 
All right, moving forward, uh, Zachary Edwards. So Zachary says, I think it's really cool what you're doing here, showing off fan work uh, to your own fan base. It might be overstating it a little bit. We'll say viewer submissions. I think that's that's safer. <laughs> uh, I look forward to seeing more photos from the wealth of talented film shooters out there, yourself included. Well, you'll definitely see more of my photos, and you, you certainly will see more of, more of other people's photos as well. Zach did not provide any extra information about himself. Uh, he did... Uh, put a watermark on all his images though, so I bet he's pretty easy to find. So I'll do my, some like internet sleuth thing and see if I can't find a website and or like a Flickr page or something to link to in the notes. So look for that down below because I, I bet I'll find something. Uh, he says a bit of information on all my images. They are all home developed. Okay, and then he's gonna go through all of them. So we'll, we'll take a look at them uh, as we go. Let's uh, Let's jump in. All right, so the first image here, this is on Portra 160. You say this is an event called the Vintage Harvest in your hometown where a bunch of old guys harvest a piece of land with equipment from like the 40s. So this is my favorite photo you sent me. First and foremost, it looks like Portra 160. It's got that beautiful high key. It's a little overexposed, but with Portra, overexposed equals, you know, beautiful. I like the separation where the, the man in the foreground is in focus and the background's out of focus, but I like that it's not so wide open that you can't tell what's going on. You can clearly see them on that harvest equipment. You know, you can see the, the different colors there. I love the, the kind of neutral tones that Portra brings to the scene. It's really cool. This is a great photo. The second one you say, this is Delta 3200 pushed one and a half ish stops somewhere around ISO 10,000, your neighborhood bar. So this is an example where uh, there's, there's not enough light for this photo. Um, it's a cool experiment, but holy man, is that noisy. <laughs> it looks like you could, yeah, I mean, you could pick those grains up with your hand. It is so noisy. Um, you know, it's, it's still cool. You can still make out what the photo is of. You know, I, it looks like you got a bunch of taps in the background. You got probably a bartender in the foreground there. But wow, uh, I've never shot uh, 3200 speed film ever. I think the fastest I've ever shot is I shot Cinestill 800 and pushed it to 1600. But um, yeah, this is, this is grainy, man. This is something. Third one, third one. This is HP5 pushed two stops uh, on a road trip with your buddy. This is him. Very good. Uh, so you guys were driving. This is up close. You got the reflection of the road in his sunglasses, which is kind of neat. The uh, the background is is completely blown out. I don't know where you're from, where you were, but uh, yeah, it's cool. It's it's nicely framed. I like the image. I like that I can see the road in front of him in those sunglasses. Like I said, um, man. So fourth image, Foma Holga. I don't even know what that is. Somebody tell me what that is. <laughs> uh, this is pushed two stops from the passenger seat of that same road trip. This is somewhere in northern Nevada. Oh, that makes sense. All right, that explains the desert. Again, super, super gritty. Uh, really, really, really grainy. You can see the grain everywhere. Now, I just out of curiosity, did you have to... So you're in northern Nevada in the daytime. I'd imagine light would be just like super plentiful. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, you know, I've driven through Arizona and uh, in New Mexico and Nevada before. And when you're out there in the daytime, I, I feel like you could shoot 50 speed film and it wouldn't even be an issue. But uh, uh, yeah, again, I don't know how fast you shot this. You were in a moving car, so you probably... Uh, up that shutter speed quite a bit but yeah cool I mean it looks like um looks like the American Southwest the clouds are really beautiful in the sky I bet there was a, there was quite a sunset that night I bet just the way the clouds look um yeah not much else to say road trips are fun cool and last Fuji extra 400 veterans cemetery over veterans day this year I love photographing in, in cemeteries. I know that's a weird thing to say, but I, I really do. I think that there's a lot of character to them. I think there's a lot of really interesting stories and cool stuff. Uh, this looks like it was shot pretty close to wide open because the grass just falls off uh, out of focus immediately. Um, yeah, I like it. I like the way the colors look. Again, this is another film I've never shot, but uh, but very cool, you know, really interesting stuff. I like when photos, you know, sort of tell a story and have a little bit of poignancy to them. So thank you for submitting, man. Very much appreciated. All right, next up we have Jorgen Budelin. If that is not correct, uh, please let me know. I feel like I'm probably pretty close. Jorgen says, hey, here are some photos from me. Started film photography one month ago and love it. Black and white photos taken with Ilford Delta 400. Color, Kodak Portra 400. Camera, Canon AE-1 program. That is, um, you know, they say brevity is the soul of wit, and I appreciate that. It's like a knife through butter, right to the point. Uh, yeah, let's dive in. Let's take a look at these photos. All right, Jorgen. So first photo. Now, you say you started photography a month ago, and straight up, that's crazy because your photos look really cool. So this is on Ilford Delta 400. 
it's beautiful. I, I think it's really cool. I like how you got in the middle of the road. I mean, there's not really much going on here, you know, from just like an action standpoint, but I, I'm just a sucker for those tones. I'm a sucker for, you know, stone and buildings and stuff, especially when you're in that uh, that black and white film and the, you know, the transition to those highlights is so gentle and so lovely. I mean, it looks, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it might have been like fog in the background. I, I'm not certain. Good stuff, man. Now this one looks like overexposed Portra 400, which I love, you know, I made a whole video about it. So yeah, I love it. I, I like that you can see the buildings heading off into the background there. I love those, you know, blown out, uh, desaturated Portra tones. Now is that snow on the ground there? It looks like snow. I see, it looks like I see some snow on top of the buildings there too. So uh, yeah, it's cool. It's really neat. The buildings, I like the color of the buildings. This one's good. Again, uh, this is neat. This looks like it was taken either at night or as the sun was setting. I love the uh, the glow of the street lights. I love the glow from inside that that building there. Um, you know, you have kind of the the tree branches, the naked tree branches. You know, like spider webs crawling out there. It's really cool. Um, I would like to do more night photography or more evening photography because I love the way film, you know, especially color negative and black and white film renders those, you know, lights, building lights, street lights, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, this is great. And last we have just a fun experiment with opening your camera up all the way and shooting. It's cool. I, I like this one too. I, I like how it leads back clearly. You know, you have kind of a direction off to the right hand side there. I like that the, you know, the, the symmetry of that fence repeats, repeats, repeats until, you know, kind of infinity until it disappears into an out of focus blur. Really cool. The grain is obviously a, a apparent on this, you know, incredibly apparent, but uh, yeah, it's really good work. I, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm really impressed. You've been doing this for a month. Think about how good you're going to be at this in a year so stick with it if you have any questions comments you know throw them on the uh throw them on the comment section but i really appreciate you submitting man all right so last but certainly not least let's look at gaetan cormier i think that's right if that's wrong just just let me know as always you know just fill up the comment section with cor uh, corrections in my pronunciations and we'll just we'll just move on together <laughs> stronger than before so he says, hello there, Eric. First of all, big thumbs up on your YouTube channel, which I came across only recently. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. you know, keep watching. Awesome. Uh, my name is uh, Gaetan. I'm from uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, I'm native French, so please excuse my imperfect English. Trust me, that's a, it's a common thing on here. You know, we have people from all over the world. They all speak English better than I speak any other language, so not a problem. He says he's 44 years old. He started learning photography back in the early 90s, discovered digital photography in the early 2000s and got fed up by it. Uh, came back to film photography full time since the summer of 2013. He's got a number of film cameras, uh, mostly medium format from a Yashica A Fuji GW693, which is an awesome camera, to a pinhole camera. Uh, right now his tool of choice is his trusted Bronica SQA. It's a six by six camera. We've actually, we've actually seen some really awesome results with that camera in the viewer submissions in the past. People have taken some really beautiful photos with that Bronica and it's a super affordable camera if you look on KEH or, or eBay. It says, last summer he had the great pleasure to visit Brittany in France. Uh, the five photos included with this message were all made with the Bronica SQA with the 80 millimeter 2.8 lens using Arista EDU 100 black and white film. Uh, film was processed by him using Rodinal. Uh, let's go. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so the first one's called Low Tide at uh, Mont Saint-Michel. Uh, Mont Saint-Michel is two kilometers away from the northeastern part of Brittany. You had a trip there where you saw some of Michael Kenna's work. Uh, this photo shows the Low Tide Bay as seen from the top of the mountains. Okay, so this photo is beautiful. It's surreal. It's, um, it's very graphical, but I love it. I would love to see this scene photographed with something like a large format camera, but it's gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's sort of surreal. It sort of uh, looks like another, another world or another planet. I love it. All right, second photo, Merlin's tomb. Uh, Brittany is full of history and legends. You've probably heard the legends of King Arthur. Uh, Merlin's home was in the magnificent forest of Brosselinade. <laughs> And legend says he was buried there with his love Vivian, the Lady of the Lake. This is their tomb. Well, I'm certainly interested in seeing Merlin's tomb. I think any time that you can go visit the tomb of a wizard, uh, you're doing pretty well. Uh, is again, it's really cool. I don't know how, how you got that kind of. I don't, did you use flash? I, again, I'm not sure. But the sort of selective lighting on there is um, is really beautiful. Your photos have again this sort of dreamlike. Uh, surreal quality to them that I think is is really lovely and the, the subject matter is is interesting too. Uh, I like the fall off in focus in the foreground there if that wasn't enough f words for you 
and the black and white really renders this in a beautiful way. This is cool. Third photo, Karnak. Uh, Brittany's history goes back as far as 6,000 years ago to the Stone Age. The primitive man of that time, for some unknown reason, made fields of big stones weighing several tons. These are called meniers? Meniers? Stonehenge is made of meniers. Um, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I'm sorry. I mean, why does anybody build anything? <laughs> You know, man, <laughs> we build all sorts of crazy stuff that has no immediate uh, value. But yeah, it's cool. This is cool. I love the black and white again. It has that sort of austere look to it uh, that, that the other one does. This sort of windswept, beaten look to the grass, um, the clouds in the sky. You know, you get those light clouds streaking across the sky. And then you have these big rocks just setting up for God knows what reason. Uh, it's very cool. Fourth photo. Pool do? Pool do? <laughs> uh, during my trip, we went stargazing with a local astronomy club. In the beginning of the night, we had some cloud cover, so I set up my good old Bronica for a one-minute exposure aiming at the bay. Came out quite nice. So you can immediately tell this is a long exposure, obviously. The, the water has kind of melted away into this sheet of glass that's covering everything. Uh, obviously, it is super contrasty. You know, you have that uh, that building in the background that's a little bit lighter than the rest of the the rocks there. But the rocks themselves, the the little islands out there, are all just black. Um, they look like charcoal almost. And the sky, because you said the you said you had the cloud cover, so the sky is just a a sheet of gray. It's really interesting. It's really cool. I like your composition. Um, I like how it's you know kind of weighted to the right hand side, but you do have that little bit on the left to kind of balance it out there. And last. So many French words, man. <laughs> Rock crop at Mont Dari. Brittany is pretty much flatlands with some hills, you say. One of these hills is called Mont Dari. Possibly. <laughs> there are some very interesting rock formations over there which captured my attention. You, again, that sort of windswept, austere, jagged beauty. I mean, it's it's scary looking. <laughs> it looks like something from the Dark Crystal. Uh, very cool. Really neat. I like, again, the balance in the image. I would love to see these at full resolution to get in and see kind of the detail in those ferns in the foreground. Um, so this looks like it was taken in the middle of the day. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the shadows are super dark. The highlights are bright. The sky is kind of just a blank sheet, you know, a blank canvas there, but very cool, very uh, evocative and, and kind of spooky actually. So you sent me your Instagram and your portfolio. I will link to both of those in the show notes. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. All right. So there you have it guys. You, you asked for it and, and it's made its triumphant return. As always, if you would like to submit and have your photos featured in one of these videos, it's pretty simple. Send me up to five uh, images in JPEG format attached to uh, the email, not a link, uh, and keep them all under two megabytes in size. And uh, just give me a little bit of info about yourself, about the camera, about the lens, and about the film you use, and you will find yourself uh, in a future video. If you sent me a video and it somehow got lost in the, the ton of submissions I got initially, um, and you you haven't been featured but you think that, that I got it, uh, send me like a little reminder email and I'll I'll pull it up and include you uh, in the future. This is probably gonna be like a once a month thing, so, so look for one of these next month at some point in March. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. I do have a Patreon if you wanna help grow this channel and move it forward, and click that little bell up there so you see when I put new content up. The plan right now is every Wednesday morning, a new video going forward. I know I've made commitments like this in the past and, and not exactly held to them, but that's the plan. We're gonna be doing one video a week every Wednesday morning, so you know, mark your calendar or whatever. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of the photos in this batch. Um, if you liked them, of course, go check out the different photographers, go to their, you know, various flickers and Instagrams and websites and, and thumb up their stuff and comment and let them know that, that you discovered it and you think that they're doing good work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. I'll see you in about a week.